do you have a sustainable ranching plan in these changing times with uncertain rainfall? We hear and talk a lot about sustainable ranching and sustainable agriculture these days. What exactly is sustainability? Economic sustainability involves using the assets of the business to allow it to continue functioning profitably over time. Environmental sustainability is the practice that contributes to the quality of the environment on a long-term basis. Social sustainability relates to the quality of life and the extent to which communities support the individual and collective well-being. This presentation is going to focus on the economic and environmental sustainability aspects of ranching. In the ranching world, because of our interaction dependence on the environment, we cannot have economic sustainability without environmental sustainability, or vice versa. If you're turning a profit but ruining your natural resources in the process, you will be out of business in a few years. By the same token, if you're taking care of your natural resources but losing money every year, you will likewise be out of business in a few years. We need a business plan that provides both environmental and economic sustainability because if we don't have both, we really don't have either. And consequently, we probably do not have a ranch that is sustainable long term in this day and time. We know for our pasture forest to be healthy, it needs both the proper amount of grazing and the proper amount of rest. The accepted rule of thumb is take half, leave half. Then the grass needs the proper amount of rest. The time frames to accomplish both of these correctly varies, of course, with varying amounts of rainfall. Bottom line, to have healthy grass, you have to be able to graze your grass when it needs grazed and get off of it when it needs rest. And of course, the main objective in ranching is to turn a profit in the process. In the good old days, it seemed pretty easy to manage our grass. Grazing periods and rest periods seemed to be pretty easy to synchronize when we got a lot of rain. Then, along come the drought. During the drought, we've seen scenarios where ranchers end up overgrazing by weeks or even months waiting for rain. The reason they waited so long to get off their grass was because the only other option they had was to sell their cows. Many times they no sooner sold their cows than they got a big rain. The scenario we just looked at is an example of a rancher trying to obtain both economic and environmental sustainability while relying on a variable that was 100% out of his control. Ultimately, he did not obtain either. Most ranchers today are extremely stressed, being pulled in opposite directions. They're trying to properly manage their grass, thus obtaining environmental sustainability, while not going broke in the process, thus maintaining economic sustainability. We've seen examples where ranchers have bought and sold cattle so many times trying to maintain proper grazing practice, they no longer have a set of cows with those good genetics they worked so hard to perfect. Instead, they now have a herd of trader cows. In other situations, ranchers have held their heifers in an effort to maintain those good genetics. This has been frustrating too, because the rain hasn't come when they needed it. I believe most of us hoped that we would get back to those days of abundant rainfall, and everyone could rebuild their herds and get back to business as usual. Instead, what has happened is this on-again, off-again rainfall. You never know what's going to happen from year to year or even month to month. We need a ranching plan that acknowledges that rain may be very limited from year to year, and yet the environmental and economic aspects of the ranch still work together, rather than pulling us in opposite directions. Most of us have been to grazing seminars and understand the concept of animal unit days. For example, if you have a pasture with 100 animal unit days, you could run one cow-calf pair for 100 days, or you could run 100 cow-calf pairs for one day. But technically, you'll most likely be overgrazed with the one cow-calf pair for 100 days. It will be more likely to be properly grazed 
and actually improve the grass if it has 100 pairs for one day. This is a bit of an extreme comparison, but the concept is that the one cow will continually graze her favorite plants over and over and actually hurt the root system of the better plants, while the 100 head will most likely graze every plant only once. This combined with proper rest will actually stimulate the regrowth and root structure of all the plants, provided, of course, this happens during the growing season. With these better grazing practices in mind, if we have a ranch that has a carrying capacity of 200 head for 12 months, we could potentially better graze and utilize the grass if we ran 400 head on it for 6 months. The missing piece of the puzzle for most ranchers is the ability to efficiently meet the cow's dry matter requirements without grass for the other 6 months. Many times in the past, ranchers have attempted to feed the total dry matter requirements and they've been disappointed with the results. Either it wasn't cost effective or the condition on the cattle was disappointing. When feeding cows a total roughage based ration, you will virtually always have to blend feed sources to obtain a cost efficient balanced ration. Secondly, there are four basic fundamental requirements that must be met or else efficiency or cattle condition might be sacrificed. The four basic requirements for feeding a cost-efficient roughage-based ration to cows are number one, you must meet the cow's dry matter requirements. Number two, you must meet the cow's protein requirements. Number three, you must meet the cow's energy requirements. And number four, the roughage in the ration has to be in the optimal particle size with a stem length of three quarters of an inch to six inches. In other words, the roughage needs to be run through a processor. The particle size requirement is typically overlooked by most producers. Flaking the hay off or unrolling it will typically result in having to feed 20 to 30 percent more. On the other end of the spectrum, tub ground hay can sometimes result in too small a particle size which will require having to feed the same extra 20 to 30 percent. If producers had the ability to process and blend feed sources into a cost efficient ration, they could efficiently meet the cow's dry matter requirements for those six months. If ranchers had the ability to graze their grass or be off of it at any point in time, they would be able to manage and maintain their grass in these times of uncertain rainfall. The ability to graze or not graze obviously obtains better environmental sustainability. But what about economic sustainability? Let's look at the scenario we talked about earlier. On the ranch that could run 200 head for 12 months or better utilize and manage the grass with 400 head for 6 months and see how that plays out from a financial perspective. What would an efficient blended ration cost for a 1,200 pound cow during the other six months? Based on last year's feed prices of alfalfa at $180 a ton, corn stalks at $65 a ton, and whole corn at $205 a ton, a 1,200 pound dry pregnant mature cow middle third of pregnancy would require a ration mixture of 23.1 total pounds at 10% moisture, 1.4 pounds of protein, and 10.1 pounds of energy. Utilizing the above feed sources, given the ability to process, mix, and blend in any desired ratio, we could create a ration that meets our nutritional requirements for 92 cents a day. That same 1,200 pound dry pregnant cow in her last trimester, utilizing the same feed sources and given the same ability to process and blend in any desired ratio, we could create a ration that would meet her nutritional requirements for $1.14 a day. The same 1,200 pound cow the first three months after having calved, same story, same feed sources, and same ability to process and blend in any desired ratio, we could meet her nutritional requirements for $1.37 a day. Taking an average of the middle trimester, last trimester, and first three months after calving gives us an average ration cost of $1.15 per head per day. This would vary a little, of course, depending on how long she was on each ration. In other words, when she calved in the giving time frame. Let's compare the bottom line of the 200 head program requiring grass for all 12 months. 
versus the forehead head program that better manages the draft and is more environmentally sustainable. First, let's look at the 200 head program utilizing supplement and requiring winter grass. We're going to allow 24 acres per cow for the summer and 24 acres for the winter. For this comparison, we are showing these acres are available to us at no cost. We are allowing $50 for winter supplement, a 10% calving death loss, and we're selling the calves for an average of $1,100 each, giving us a gross profit after grass and supplement cost of $188,000. Now, let's look at the economics of the same ranch with the 400 head program that better manages the grass and is environmentally sustainable. We are allowing the same 24 acres per head for summer grazing. Then, after some computation, we determined that if we were not saving 24 acres per head for winter grazing, we could run an additional 200 head, giving us a total of 400 cows. We insert our average ration cost of $1.15 per head per day that we calculated earlier, and we multiply that times 180 days, giving us a per head feed cost of $207. We calculate in a payment on a piece of equipment that will allow us to create this cost-efficient ration at a little less than $20,000. We allow the same 10% death loss, the same $1,100 average for our calves. This gives us a gross profit after grass, feed, and feed equipment payment costs of $294,144. The gross profit on the 400 head operation just mentioned less the gross profit on the 200 head operation calculated earlier of $188,000 shows us we have an increase of $106,144. Note, there's an increase in the bottom line of over $100,000 when the better grazing practices were utilized. One of the big advantages the better grazing practice provides is during the growing season, the grass is at its highest protein level. Protein in the growing season is normally 60% to 80% higher than in the dormant season. When we wait to utilize our grass during the dormant season, we are not utilizing 60 to 80% of the protein our ranch has produced in those pastures. The second big advantage these better grazing practices provide is when properly grazed during the growing season, the grass is improved. Virtually every grazing management program will point out that proper grazing during the growing season will actually improve your grass, while even proper grazing during the dormant season will not do much to improve the grass. We have noted that having the means of meeting the cow's total dry matter requirements efficiently can allow for better grazing practices, increasing environmental sustainability, and simultaneously increase the bottom line, providing economic sustainability. Our goal was to create an environmental and economic sustainability that will work in these changing times with uncertain rainfall. So what will this plan look like on our below average rainfall years when we may have to provide the total dry matter requirements for 8, 9, or even 12 months out of the year? Let's look at worst case scenario. There's no grass and we're having to feed for 365 days a year. First scenario we're going to look at is 200 head of cows in the conventional ranching program with no grass and no means of processing or blending feed sources. Feeding $300 ton alfalfa to the same 1,200 pound cow we looked at earlier, if you have no means of processing the hay, you will probably flake off or unroll over 30 pounds a day trying to maintain her condition. At just 30 pounds, that equates to $4.50 a head a day. That equates to an annual ranch loss of over $130,000. Next, let's look at the 400 head of cows in our environmentally sustainable program with no grass either the fed a processed blended ration. Starting with $300 a ton alfalfa, $120 a ton corn stalks, $300 a ton whole corn, we could create a ration meeting our 1,200 pound cow's requirements costing $1.65 a day during the first three months, then $1.98, and $2.31, and $2.99 for the following three months periods respectively, the average being $2.25 a day. 
That equates to an annual ranch gross profit of $48,444. It is worth noting that the $48,444 figure is after including feeding equipment payment in the feed expense. With the option to process and blend feeds into a cost-efficient ration, we can feed the cows for considerably less than just flaking off or unrolling unprocessed, unblended feed. Unprocessed and unblended can cost four to five dollars a head a day. A processed and blended ration will probably be two hundred dollars a head cheaper, and when feed gets high and you have to feed longer, it may be closer to eight hundred dollars a head cheaper. We also still have our cows, and we're not buying and selling to manage our grass, which, if the market continues to go up, is going to take us backwards financially and probably genetically as well every time we do it. Another issue we're hearing a lot about is that with the current world population growth, we're going to have to radically increase agriculture production to be able to feed everyone. In 2011, humanity welcomed its 7 billionth member. At the current birth rate, experts predict we will reach more than 9 billion by 2050. To feed everyone, we will need to double the amount of food we currently produce. This, of course, would tend to support the uptrend market we are currently experiencing long term. It is a fact that more people became millionaires during the Great Depression in the 30s than any other time in history. Point being, there are usually a lot of opportunities available during tough times for those who are willing to look for them. It has been stated that a man's level of success is usually a direct correlation to how quickly he is able to assess the reality of a situation and react appropriately. The reality is times have changed. We don't know what to expect from year to year. We may have more grass we know what to do with, or we may not have any. If our ranching plan is only sustainable in wet years, we are pretty vulnerable in this day and time. In these changing times, we need our ranching operation both environmentally and economically sustainable from a wet year to a dry year, or vice versa. If producers are always able to meet their cows' total dry matter requirements in a cost and time efficient manner, it will provide for both an environmentally and economically sustainable operation in these changing and uncertain times. Both the ration calculator and the bottom line analyzer are available free online to help you develop a sustainable ranching plan at www.easyration.com. In the words of Thomas Jefferson, agriculture is our wisest pursuit because it will in the end contribute most to real wealth, good morals, and happiness.